Going to college was really not part of my background. Um, I got, this is going to seem very strange. I have 38 aunts and uncles, probably about 85 cousins, and none of them went to college. My mom told me when I graduated from eighth grade, if I get a master's degree, which she explained to me later what it was, she'd get me $3,000 or a car. Now, back in 1960, when I graduated eighth grade, that was a big deal. I mean, that really got my attention. Um, so I knew I was going to really try to go to college if I could. So well, that was the beginning of my understanding of why I was going to go to college. There was a little mercenary element behind it. I needed a degree. Everybody in my neighborhood, everybody in my extended family, high school, job. High school, military. High school, leave home. My mother motivated me to do this. And when you go through high school, over time, you, you fall into categories. I was one of the smart kids category. I tried to play the athlete, and I was to a degree. Uh, but I was a smart athlete. And smart people went to college. And when I went to the University of Illinois, I knew only three other people from our graduating class of 800 plus that I knew were actually going to the University of Illinois. And that was the number one place to go in our state because it was inexpensive and good. And I came from what it would honestly say would be a very, very, very working class environment for our students. So my mother, yes, and the more I understood what college was going to be about, I thought, well, yeah, I probably belong there. Going to college was tricky when you, like you said, you have no experience when you're first generation. And you're scared and you're confused. And in 1964, let me tell you, there were college counselors, but they didn't have anything. There was nowhere near the amount of material that we have now. And shockingly enough, there was no internet. And so getting information was difficult. I had two interviews at private institutions in the state of Illinois, private colleges, that wanted me to come and were willing to give me a scholarship um, for my scores on the ACT, which is the Midwest version of the SAT, and for, believe it or not, my wrestling ability. Uh, but even with that, it was cheaper for me to go to the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign, which was a better school, a very large school. But I came from a very large high school, 5,000 students. But going to the University of Illinois was cheaper and had a higher uh, rating that I could find. And so that's where I went. First year in college. Okay, first of all, it was confusion and fear. <laughs> As a freshman in 1964, you were fortunate enough that they picked all the classes and times for you. So my calculus class was Monday through Friday, 8 to 9. That was a wonderful time to start. Um, but I was nervous, so I was usually at Cal class at quarter to 8, 20 to 8. I didn't want to miss anything. Um, I was scared that I would make mistakes. So I studied, how do I put this, all the time I wasn't working and sleeping. All right? So I was very dedicated. Since nobody in my family that I knew of, and I found out nobody in family had ever gone to college, so I was correct in this, I couldn't fail. I just couldn't. It would make me, you know, well, here's somebody who's gone to college and he failed. I guess nobody in the greater Holly family has a chance. Well, no. I was going to study. And I did. Made me a rather boring person. But I studied and I worked and I slept and I studied and I worked and I slept. It was a very easy routine. But the grades were good. I got perfect scores my first two semesters. The first C I ever got in college, the only C I ever got in college. Unfair? You bet. 
It was a, bio, uh, it was a biology course. The instructor was, as I found out later, quite insane. Um, the final exam, I had like 75% B going into the course. It was all multiple choice and matching. Now think of matching three pages of columns, three different pages, and they could match on any page. Okay, like 30 names, two matches. And I, and I work like a dog and I have a good memory. And I got a C for the course. And I was, this is the time I was really mad and upset. And the guy said, well, the, the guy quit the university and we can't change the grades. Sorry. And there was nothing I could do about it. Now, I understand when the administrator says, you know, that's it. Guy's gone. And, you know, I got nothing to do but go away and get upset to yourself. But it bothered me. I was going to make sure when I taught, because I, the longer I was in college, the more I sort of liked communication between professor and student. And I had some really good history professors who, who actually did talk to students who didn't find us beneath a conversational level. And so if I was ever going to do that, no one was going to find out why they got a, could not find out why they got a grade from me. So Dr. Holly is always available. And my students get that day one. So never say, you can't get a hold of Dr. Holly because I know you're lying. I, I tell my students not to plagiarize, but I borrow heavily from others who have demonstrated that they can do something better than I can do or they've restructured in a different way. I have borrowed certain techniques from my mentor, Chester Starr, about teaching. I have seen people on the 17th floor of the Department of History in the Patterson Office Tower. I have borrowed from numerous people. I found certain things, no matter what you borrow from, you have to have a core of, of values about teaching. You must really be excited about what you're doing. I teach ancient history. Not what you would call something that rivets young minds. Greece and Rome. Oh, Gladiator? Well, I'll tell you what's good about it. The 300? Not so much. I talk about the early Christianity, which gets them sort of interested. But in general, no, no. It's just... But I get a lot of students. It's because they see in my presentation my questioning of them in class, even in lecture. That I really am interested in this. And if I'm interested to such a degree, maybe there's something in there that they're going to like. And I find that the more interest I show, the more response I get. Now, I'm not faking it. I really do like ancient history. I have from the beginning. So there's no falsity in this. And I really like seeing young minds go, oh, yeah, I see why he's saying that. Or, no, you can't say this today about that then. And they start to begin to realize history can give you perspective on things. It can you know, have you fall back from running off and making a conclusion based on insufficient evidence or just emotion. And to see students come of age mentally, that's exciting for me. But the point I'm saying is that if you enjoy teaching, the students are going to enjoy learning. If you show no emotion, no care, no interest in the subject, the students say, why am I here? If you're repeating stuff that's in the book they have to read, why are they there? And this interaction of text and professor and ancillary readings and showing how they can all go together to make a student's mind grow in the process. To me, that's what teaching is all about. Don't react too quickly. Just don't react too quickly. It's different. Hey, it's supposed to be. Look around, you don't see your parents, you don't see your high school teachers, you're not in high school anymore. 
and that's good. Because you've already graduated. You've passed the test that say you belong here. So understand it's going to take a while to acclimate here. Do not overreact. Secondly, you might have been the biggest, bestest, baddest person in your high school. Well, there's a lot more of you now here. And realize what an A might be in Pike County or Western Kentucky or anywhere else. Might not be an A in Dr. Holly's class. But you know what? You come and talk to him or talk to the math instructor or talk to the English 104 instructor or Chem 105. These are all possible. Don't get upset when you don't get your A the first time. Find out why you didn't. That's the most important thing. Find out why you didn't. There are numerous facilities around here to help you. So don't overreact. Don't go home. Find out right now how you can better yourself. You'll find out there are so many things here that can help you. And that's one of the greatest things that the University of Kentucky is doing. They are providing so many services for you. So since you're paying for them, use them. Think of them as using all of your tuition dollars well. All right, and this is really my best advice. Just don't freak out. This is a great experience. Trust me, you don't want to go to work now, even if you could find a job. You don't want to go to work. You want to get a degree. You want to get skills. Um, I've been teaching here for three decades. Students tell me, and we talk about things in my class, about other things. I'm accessible. And what I tell them, find something you like to do. It might take you a couple of years, and you may change majors. Fine. But find something you like to do. Secondly, acquire the skills to do it well. That means work at it. And thirdly, you won't have a job, you'll have a life. And so all of these things together... That's why you don't react quickly. You can do this. You've graduated high school. You've got the qualifications here. Of course it's rough water. It's college. But you can handle it. You just don't go running away. It's too early. You can do this.